quick recap of the last session as we had some technical issues where half of the session unfortunately wasn't recorded. So last week we met the four adventurers for this campaign. Adam playing C12 Gamma 6, the Warforged Artificer. Joe playing Elias the Grizzly, a human barbarian. Brad playing Orin Garrick, a tree gnome wizard. And Torbs who's playing Han Velsing, the human fighter. The campaign started with the four of them sat down inside the inn of the one-wheeled wagon in Daggerford. They had never met each other before and were all there at the same time by sheer coincidence. The captain of the guard came in and asked for four strong volunteers to help the Duchess get rid of some unsavoury characters. Naturally, the adventurers agreed as gold was offered in exchange. They relayed the message to the group, and the leader, a man called Stanmere, agreed that they would leave at first light provided he could tell the heroes a story. They sat and listened and were asked if they would help their lord be free from his curse. They all agreed. During the night they were transported to a new realm, unaware of their location or what had happened. The adventurers stumbled into a town called Barovia, where all around them a strange mist covered everything but the footpath. Two children were spotted in the street crying. They told the party that there was a monster in their house and asked if the adventurers could kill it. After a little bit of disagreement, the adventurers were forced into the house, ready to explore and kill the supposed monster. And that is where we will pick up today's session. Do this. <laughs> Let's go! Oh, that's so, so ominous. Uh, where you last were, obviously you just fought what turned out to be a suit of animated armour. Um, managed to destroy it with not many hiccups at all, to be honest. You handled yourselves quite well. Um, and so in front of you, to the north, you can see a double set of doors closed. The staircase that you came up is to the east and then to the south there is also another door which adjacent to it has uh, another door that's locked and where these set of the double doors are <laughs> opposite that there is also another door to a room on your uh, west side west side don't fish, west side and west fish and a rice cake a fish and a rice cake a door and a double <laughs> door, <laughs> door. <laughs> lots of doors lots of rooms Lots uh, of doors, I, lots of rooms. I think before we were savagely attacked, I think we were sort of heading into the northern room. Is that yeah, correct? we were going to go 12 into A. the yeah into the north room. Um, I think we should carry on that way. Yeah, we just need to sweep room by room, see what's occurring. Mm -hmm. okay. what, what floor are we on at the moment, Heath? Uh, you're it's currently on the third, third floor. The third floor. Okay. Do we get any kind of indication of how many floors this building is before we came into it? We couldn't uh, you, go any higher, could we? Based on from what you saw when you were outside the house, you noticed that there was four floors. Oh, okay. Was this uh, suit of armour that we destroyed on our floor now? It's destroyed on the floor, yes. Is it? Does it have a shield? No. No, I'm down. <laughs> um, can I, <laughs> Not can I yet. possibly <laughs> make... <laughs> could I possibly make an arcana check? Would that be okay? On the suit of armour? To see if there's any like magic still left over. Yep, go for it. One second, though. What's my? I don't think barbarians have very good. I'm not gonna if you want. Oh yeah, if someone else could do it, that'd be great. Cause mine's minus one. Go on. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do the off on. Uh, we just uh, roll it in yet in general, bro. Uh, eight. Excellent uh, first roll. There is. No, no magic <laughs> presence coming from this armor. You have destroyed it. Anything that was uh, emitting from it previously has just stopped. Ah, my friend Garrick, what do you discern from looking at the magical armor? Uh, nothing. It's just broken armor. Oh, interesting. Can anybody hear the sound of a baby? Can I make a perception check and see if I can hear any crying or anything? I know the kids yep, said that be, uh... Let's have a look. That was an oddly specific. <laughs> I know so because there's meant to be a baby in here somewhere, isn't there? Or, or like a... No, not an infirmary, what's the word? Where little children are. <laughs> no, no, sorry. An infirmary. An infirmary! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Dark, <laughs> natural <in> one. <laughs> natural fucking one. First yeah, natural one. Of, uh, the, the robots even have ears, Adam. Can... Uh, just got holes gamma, gamma, gamma just like he, he senses like vibrations all, and yeah there's audio it. receptors yeah converts you, it. your 
Your antennae are not picking anything up. <laughs> He's got a virus. <laughs> <He's got> a... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. There's no computer software really about me. I'm completely. You have an malware function. You need to. Uh, you need to reboot. Run reboot. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Robot's got into your mainframe. Uh, if Han or Han can uh, trepidatiously head into the northern room, uh, please. So you walk up to the set of double doors in front of you. Uh, noticing that they have dusty panes of stained glass set into them, and the designs in the glass resemble windmills. You open it up uh, as it is unlocked, and you see what appears to be a master bedroom. There are burgundy drapes covering the windows. The furnishings include a four-poster bed with embroidered cut curtains and tattered gossamer veils, a matching pair of empty wardrobes, and a vanity with a wood frame in a mirror and jewellery box, and a padded chair. The um, the bed with the um, the what's it called the um, is it got like covers over it? Did you say like yeah? Um, no, there's so obviously there's it, like a four post the bed and it's got like the, the curtains. Are the curtains of... closed or are the curtains open? No, they're open, so you can oh, see. Right. Like there's so nothing there's on nothing there. there, right? Okay. Mm. Um, can I uh, make a perception check? Um, around the room, please. Yep, of course. And we'll do the same if that's okay. Yep, both roll. Are we going to the main room? Yeah, you um, see you've walked into uh, the room in front of you. I've got 19. 19. Um, you don't notice anything of note in the room other than above the tiger skin rug that is on the floor where the fireplace is, there hangs a dusty portrait of two people, a man and a woman. Same uh, man and woman you notice in the portrait on the first floor. Can I take the portrait off the wall? You can. That must be the parents. Mm. Where there's are nothing, they? There's nothing behind the portrait, it's just the floor. Oh, bloody stump, mate. Hmm. Perhaps we should venture further downstairs into the basement, or could we not find one? No, we can't find one, could we? Hmm. There must be some secret door or passageway somewhere then. I doubt the children would lie to us. Hmm. The question is, how do we find it? Can I look well, around? Oh, carry on, carry on. Sorry, no, you go, you go. I say, uh, can we look around the room to see if we can see anything out of place? I was just like, Eth, can I make a perception check to see if I can see any walls or things that I wouldn't expect to be there, but are there? And like sticking out further or bits of weird room inside the room you're in. Yeah, now. in the room that I'm in now. Uh, yeah, make a perception check. Well, I, I like I'll, I'll go into the uh, the main hallway as well. So I'm looking at all the uh, the walls as well. Oh, bloody Nora, a seven. <laughs> you just notice just the uh, normal doors that you noticed when you were in the main hallway. So are we are we in the hallway again? Yes, if you've all followed, got me back um, um, the staircase. I, I'll still be in that main room, um, and I kind of want to check out the other two little doorways going to 12B and 12C, if I can sort of look at 12B first. Yep, so you open the door on the south wall, um, and in front of you it just reveals an empty dust choked closet. Can I go... Um, so... Where the um, where the staircase is, can I go to the sort of like uh, where the uh, the southern part of that, um, and sort of see if there's any secret entrances um, in the uh, on the south part of the um, landing. Yep, make a perception check for me. Okay, okay. Uh, Twenty. Do you notice that part of the wall by the southern part of the staircase uh, actually doesn't feel like it's fitted in properly as the rest of it is? And you push gently, which it then comes away and you can lift it out, revealing a small corridor with some stairs leading upward behind. Oh, boys, check it out. I found a secret hallway. 
Ah. Han will come out of the master bedroom and head towards uh, where everybody else is. Yeah, I'm going to uh, pique, pique my interest and say, Ah, well done, Elias. You are more than just a rough face. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I'm pretty fucking rough, mate. <laughs> 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 Oh, anyway. Who wants to take the lead? Well, I'll go for it, mate. That was what I would suggest. So I'll go up the um, axe in hand. Can I, um, while I'm walking up the stairs, can I prepare an action that if anything pops out at me at the top, I'm just going to swing me great axe? What if it's a baby? Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> No, if there's you... a baby in the attic, there is no way I'm fucking keeping it alive. That is demented. <laughs> Han will follow follow up behind him, sort of a few feet behind, uh, sort of with a with his scimitar. Well, just yeah, no, just one one scimitar out and ready. Um, but I won't sort of prepare to swing at anything that moves. <laughs> I've got my Eldritch cannon. I'm lugging that with me on my. Uh... I would prefer if you didn't, if you were standing right <laughs> behind me. <laughs> yeah, get your fucking rocket launcher out, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Close the space. <laughs> Maybe alright. I'll avoid any AOE, sp AOE spells. <laughs> you walk up the stairs, and they, it branches left, leading to another set of stairs, and a door which you push open with ease, finding yourself in a wide corridor. Uh, there is a door the looking since it's north facing uh, the picture shows on the west so just turn it on its side kind of thing um you can see that there with the corridor branching to the left and a door below you back from where you came can i go into the uh, right hand facing room please so the one immediately to you where the, the two beds are. yeah so come up come up the stairs uh walk across the landing the first one on the right yeah um, you go up to the door and try to open it, and it is locked. Interesting. Hmm. Um, Perhaps, Elias, uh, you should boot it down. Yeah, can I, um, uh, can I boot it down? I'll just look at Gamma and be like, I was gonna do that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a strength check. Oh, here we go, boys. You ready? <clears throat> this is, this is my time to shine. That's what you're born to do, mate. It was what I booted down doors. It was what I was born to do. <laughs> Worst case, I'll just send an Eldritch Blast from the cannon then to it. <laughs> yeah, you ready? Shoot the fucking off. 16. Oh, 16. 16. 16. Give yourself a bit of a run up and charge at it with your muscly uh, physique, bashing your shoulder into the door, exerting the huge grunt of effort as you do. The door shudders a little bit, but remains in place. And oh, this whole house sort of shakes. Whoa. Uncle is not your strong suit, is it? <laughs> Leave it at, mate. So the door didn't open? That's no. embarrassing. Okay, um, I'm gonna say, please stand back, everybody. And I wanna make oh, an attack with my Eldritch no. cannon. <laughs> uh, at the yep. door. Roll with it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna use the Force Ballista. Uh, version of the attack so basically it's going to be um large like playing tom clancy's siege yeah, <laughs> landing seaport so check those corners right there we go oh my god natural one <laughs> <laughs> natural one i just had back to back natural ones jesus yeah, christ yeah. Oh. you uh you go to fire off your eldritch cannon uh and for whatever reason, the mechanism just locks up and seizes, and it just <laughs> and the light uh, just goes out, and it's just just like an empty piece of tin. Now you can't use it for uh, four hours. Four hours! <laughs> Fucking hell! Hours. <laughs> um, that's what you get for a critical failure. Yeah, that's uh, true. While while these lot are prattling about, uh, Han will go and check the west room, so directly behind us from where we've been looking. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna break up this eldritch cannon into into scrap into magical scrap again, and because the way it works is I, c I can only make one per long rest, so I'm effectively redundant with my eldritch cannon now to learn another long rest. So I'll just turn it back into its magical scrap. Um, so I've been lugging what it around. What can you actually do now? What can you attack at all? Oh, don't you worry. I can punch. I can kick. I can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like an arm strike. Great. <laughs> no, I've got a few spells. I've got a few spells in my locker. Okay. As it, Elias, try again. So, I'm, I'm going to do Torg's first. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, into that room. So you walk through this door, uh, um, and inside you see a dusty chamber packed with old furniture, chairs, coat racks, standing mirrors, dress mannequins, and all such sorts, all draped in dusty white sheets. Near an iron stove underneath one of the sheets is a wooden trunk. Ooh, can I see if I can open it? Yep. Are we with? I take it we're not with him. I know you haven't gone in at the moment. Okay. So if you, in fact, for that, can you all deafen yourselves, please, whilst I do this with? Uh, uh yes, I can. Can we all what? Deafen <laughs> on <laughs> Discord. I forgot to do that. It's like <laughs> so next to your name is a mute button and then it's a deafen. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, okay, I didn't know that. That just means you can't hear what I'm telling. Just so message in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise. We, we, we know, know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to deafen now. Yeah, message, message me when I can come back. Uh, so you open um, the trunk torch, and inside are some skeletal remains of a female wrapped in a tattered bedsheet stained with dry blood. Is there anything else with the body, or is it just the remains? Just the remains at the moment. And can I get a rough idea? Is the is the skeleton complete, and can I get a rough idea on sort of how tall they would be? Are we sort of talking, sort of be a, an older female? Would it be sort of five foot plus sort of height, or? Yeah, um, it's she was an adult when she died. Female, uh, female body, and probably, you know, probably it's just average height, five foot, five, okay, five okay. foot three. Uh, and there's nothing, so there's nothing else in that trunk. Um, can I? I'll sort of, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep the remains sort of where, where they are in there, and just sort of close the, close the lid slowly. Yeah. Um, can I? Before I go back and alert the others, can I have a quick scan around the rest of the room, see if there's anything else of interest? Yeah, make another perception check for me. Yeah. Perception. Oops. Natural 20. You don't notice anything else when you... Um outside of what's already in here other than the skeleton in the comment uh, in the chest right okie dokie um i will head out of the room um and alert the others okay everyone i think i may have found a mother oh in the uh, in the in the west room back there there's a chest and well there's there's remains in there but i couldn't find anything else in the room just a skeleton of a female body sort of over five feet in height but nothing to say who it is for certain but hmm. i have a bad feeling about this uh perhaps i should take a look at the skull i may be able to reconstruct it in my mind and determine if it is the female in the painting that's something you can do <laughs> i can have a good guess as anybody <laughs> <laughs> be, be my guest and H Han will just like step back and just outstretch his arm as if just, just to say like go on then <laughs> just, like, I'll, um, back, back I'll, I'll, go, I'll go in with him as well Same I'll go in with uh, Gamma I want to wanna slowly walk over to this chest and, and I'll try and slowly uh, lift the lid of them Elias and Han are you going with? I'm going to stand uh, outside the door on watch to see if anything's I will yeah, shape I'll... upon us I'll go into the room. Uh, Elias, are you kind of standing in the door frame but facing outwards? 
Yeah, like a bouncer. Okay. <laughs> so no one gets in unless they've got ID. <laughs> Dicky and the rest of us will be in the room then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no need to deafen then. You can all see what's going on. Uh, so Adam, you walk over to the chest that uh, Pan Paul uh, pointed out, and you open it, revealing the skeletal remains of the female. What would you like to do? Can I um, make an investigation check on the skull and try and determine if it has the same facial structure as the woman on the painting that Elias is carrying? Yep. Oh, so it's not a special power. Oh, I thought you had like a. <laughs> no, I'm just a curious, <laughs> a curious war. Oh, right. I thought you had some mad power that was like. Tell you what, you got, you got some people's people's faces. In, uh, mad skills, yeah, to do that. Pair <laughs> <laughs> of painting to a school. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Yeah. My investigation check is a seven. You walk oh, over hell. to the um the remains and you start to move move them around, picking up the skull. You hold it to your eyes, judging if it is the same uh it has the same features as the woman you see in the painting. Immediately dust wrinkles around the chest and starts to form up in the air as a ghostly spectre stands over you. She looks you dead in the eyes and goes, Leave this place. Rob, oh. come back. Oh, oh my fuck. fuck. <laughs> Chills, I got goosebumps. Oh no. A little bit of oil leaks down Gamma's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's my... Nice. Uh, I'm scared, guys. 16! 16! A lot of 20s coming in here. Oh, no. <laughs> 16. Right. I don't know how to kill a ghost. Uh, Adam, 18. you got... 16. Brad, 20. Torgs, 20. Uh, Joe, and 18. Okay, so... First up, uh, staring at the spectre. It is Brad's go. What would you like to do? You are, where were you in relation to um, Gamma as he walked in? I, I walked in like with him. So are you directly in front of the chest with him? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're, yeah, well, you're in within five feet of the, the spec for them. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to fire off a fireball at it. Okay, roll to hit. Uh, 21. Yep, hits. Roll damage. Bang. Jesus. Two. <laughs> uh, you fire off the fireball, winning the ma uh, magic of your power to hurt this spectre and cast it away. The fireball goes through it, singeing a little bit um, off, off it, but it just regains its... Uh, physique basically and stares down at you holy uh, shit Torch, you'll go you are uh 10 feet away as you're in the doorway oh, oh wait no i thought elias was in the doorway oh did you not where did you follow in the, the two then so you're in front yeah of yeah oh, yeah right, i had come in i'd just be so yeah melee so distance then yeah um do we question to the dm do we happen to know the name of the uh, the family uh you know that they are the durst family and the, the children you saw in the street were rosa valda and thorntold uh, and the oh. mother and father were called elias uh, not elias um elizabeth and gustav okay dokie um can i can i call out to the specter um, and I'll, I'll say, uh, are you Elizabeth Durst? We are here to help. She looks at you, and an evil grin comes on her mouth, and she lets out a laugh that is actually silent, but you can see her body convulsing, and then she stops. I am not her. And who are you? I was their nursemaid. And who did this to you? The cult. The cult. That worshipped the darkness. 
you know what happened to the rest of the family? I don't care. Why do you remain in this place? Are you trapped? They killed my son. And that prevents you from leaving? I don't know. All I know is that I died here, as did my son. And I cannot leave. Enough. She lashes out at you as a reaction. What a nasty bitch. Uh, is that... She rolls a I... six. Roll a d6. No, she rolls a six, so she misses with her swipe. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I presume that's the end of, uh, end of my turn? Yes. Okay, yep. Uh, so next up, it is Joe's go. Elias, you're in the doorway, ten feet away. Ten feet away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll um, use my... Um, uh, oh yeah, I'll use my action to uh, dash into the uh, melee distance, and I will uh, use uh, go into rage mode as a bonus action and turn okay. into a wolf. Okay. Uh, so from behind you, you hear the heavy footsteps of Elias charging forward. Uh, you turn around to see him greet you, ready to swipe out and immediately his body shifts and changes and there where Elias was standing instead is a huge white grizzly wolf bang bang so you'll go over? yeah I can't attack because I'm moved okay Matt you'll go um I'm going to call out to the <laughs> spectre or ghost yep please I, I think you misunderstand our intentions we are not here to harm you or disrupt your place of rest. We merely aim to help any individual that still lives or any person alive in here to get them out and understand what is happening. Can we help you? No one can help. Okay. So, will you fuck off then? <laughs> <laughs> and you die. Oh shit! Is that your turn? That's my turn. Yeah, I'll try to reason with it. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? The spectre uh, lashes out and tries to hit you with her life drain, uh, Gamma. She rolls a twenty-two. Uh, is this? Uh, I'm going to cast shield. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it hits. Okay, um, so you take 3d6 necrotic damage, oh, 2, shit. 7, uh, 12 points of necrotic damage. Oh, oh my Please god. Please make a constitution saving throw. Oh no. Okay. Oh, god. Let's have a look inside my kookery book. we got to put it down quick. 6! <laughs> You fail, you have to now take that 12 points of damage from your maximum total hit points. Oh my god, so my no. max hit points is now 12. Not permanently? Yes. Uh, until, un until you finish your long rest. Fuck no. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, okay. So I'm at max hit points then? So whatever your max hit points was, you took 12 damage. Well, I'm exhausted, I've got a level of exhaustion anyway, which I need to account for. Uh, and your max hit points has dropped by 12 as well. Oh my god, okay. So 12 is money max. Bloody Nora. Uh, we're back round to Brad's go. Um, I'm going to cast a first level magic missile and fire all the darts into the uh, into the ghost. Yep, okay. Roll to hit. Um, it, it just automatically hits magic missile. Alright, okay. Roll you, you just roll damage. Bloody hell, to seven, seven damage. Damage. Usher forth these magic uh, bolts, magic missile bolts, and they pierce through um, the spectre in front of you, and you notice that these do a significant, much more, uh, much more significant amount of damage than your firebolt did. 
don't think anything that I can do is going to affect this thing. Uh, is that your go over, Brad? Yeah, that's me doing. Talk, you'll go, mate. I will. Mm. Bunch of snazzy stuff I can do, but I'm not really too experienced with it. Um, I'll just make uh, two attacks with my scimitars, if I may. I use my bonus action to do my sort of other hand. So, yeah, roll to hit. Uh, what were the scimitars to hit plus four? Natural twenty. Oh, oh, bang. Yeah, that uh, definitely hits. And then oi, oi. The second attack, 23. God, heavy hitting, two hits. And then damage. Uh, so is it uh, an extra damage die for the natural 20? Yeah. So it'll be 3d6 plus 4. Jesus, uh, 13 damage. You swipe twice through um, the spectre. The first hit, she actually lets out a hiss of pain, and the second hit goes through. Um, and again, it had the same effect, where it kind of just cuts through the mist, but also no leaves a noticeable mark on the spectre's body. Nice. Uh, is that your go over? Yes, that's me done. That would then bring it round to Joe's go. Uh, yep, I am going to um, make a claw attack, um, and as it's part of the same action, I can make an additional attack. So I'll just roll. I think I just roll once. If it hits, I get two attacks. Okay. I think I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, Great man, to be honest. Okay, so claw attack, natural twenty. Oh, another one. Yes. <laughs> yep, yeah, hits. Boom. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so that is. Let me just check. Claws. Oh, back to the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three. D six plus six. Lovely jubbly. Nineteen points of damage. Shit. Bang, bang. 19! Yeah, Nine. I got a natural, and I get two attacks. Okay. How do you want to kill it? How do I want to kill it? Oh, just gonna, with my first, so I've got three claw attacks. The first claw attack will swipe on the chest. The second one will swipe the other way on the chest. And then the third claw attack will just, like, grapple around the head and just, like, tear it apart from the body. The spectre almost becomes uh, solid as the magic of the uh, barbarian rage infused into this wolf's claws digs into it, gouging out, it lets out a scream <laughs> as the wolf rips into it with fierce um, ferocity and then the spectre <laughs> vanishes and you're left alone in the room and you're all out of combat. Well done. Oh, Freaking well, um, I'll, I'll slam down the um... I pres if, yeah, if 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 anyone's still holding on to the skull, I'll, like I'll take it from I'll take it from Gamma, put it in the chest, and I'll just like slam down the the lid of the chest and just like seal it back up. Pandora's box. <laughs> yeah. I am terribly sorry for getting everybody involved in this. I feel rather weak. I must admit. Perhaps I should stay behind. You van, Han, in future. That would be fine. Also, uh, Gamma doesn't know my name, so. <laughs> what, 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 sorry, I meant to call you. V. Is it V? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you guys know at the moment. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna like, Han, Han's just gonna be standing there like, how the. F 
Fuck. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps have you got a, a, a label in the back of your jacket? Maybe I'll need to steal yeah, something. Yeah, your mom, your mom <laughs> must have into the <laughs> super, super, super secret society have labelled clothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we roll. <laughs> you're, just, you're just really paranoid about your specific coat, so you wrote yes. your name and yes. no one else has <laughs> Yeah, another um, thing on this podcast we've mastered is the art of continuity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, Han, Han agrees with uh, Gamma being able to stay behind him. Um, I think <laughs> Han, had, Han had already sort of sweeped the rest of this room um, and checked it was okay. Um, so if we could, uh, Han will lead, if we could head back out onto the landing, yep. um, then take a left and then um, um, if we could look at the east uh, the top door in the top top east of the landing please or the uh, yeah we're in the attic aren't we so the one um, the one opposite you as you come out literally right in front of you that one um, no, so, so as as we come out, ahead of us will be the the one that was locked. Um, on that same wall, like a bit further along that sort of top room in the corner. Yep, um, this one is actually unlocked, and you open it up, and inside is just the spare bedroom. There is a dusty wardrobe, a small iron stove, a nightstand, rocking chair, and a small bed. And I check sort of the, the wardrobe and the nightstand just to see if there's anything of interest at all. Yeah, uh, the wardrobe's wide open, completely empty. Um, you have a look at the nightstand and there is nothing of value on there. No information as to who this room may have belonged to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, yeah, I guess I'd sort of come out come out of there then and then check the the door that would immediately be facing me leaving that room. Hmm. The one by the stairs that you've come up. No, the one opposite the small bedroom. The one where we've just wa walked out, so sort of the, the largest of all the rooms, it looks like. Uh, are we going on the one that has the two beds in the corners? Uh, no, 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 no. The sort of top, top west one, so to the north of the one we were in with the chest with the spectre. Oh, I thought that was the one that you just walked out into. No. Okay. The other one, the bottom left on the photo is a spare bedroom, and the top right one is as well. If those are the two you're describing. Yeah, yeah, those are the ones we've done, and then I want to do sort of the the the, t the top left, top left one, since we can't get into the locked room just yet. Mm. Yeah, I'm down for that. Okay, uh, Again, it's. It appears to be another spare bedroom. This one has a uh, a writing desk with a stool and a rocking chair, and then a smiling doll in a lacy yellow dre dress sits in the northern window box. Oh my god, that's so creepy. Smiling what? Yellow doll. Oh. Uh, a doll in a yellow dress, sorry. Um, but there's nothing... There's n nothing else in the room. There's nothing that's like covered over with like sheets that we couldn't tell what it is or anything like that. No, no, just another spare bedroom. Right. Thank you, Dickie. Um. Right. So we need to, if we, um, and and again, there's there's, if if there's any like dresses or anything, we we've ch we can we check inside them. There isn't anything of interest. Yeah, no, they're all empty. Long, okay, long okay. been. Uh, um, gone. if we, a hand will come back out of that room, head back towards the door that we couldn't get into. Can he inspect the door, see if there's a, um, any kind of sort of ornate lock that looks like it would have a key that would be anything like out of the ordinary, or whether it maybe would just be like a standard, standard key or something to get into it. So, yeah, you take a look at the door to the locked room, and you notice that all that's been done is that there's been a padlock uh, attached to the hint, like to the, where the handle is, stopping it from being opened from both your end and from inside the room. Uh, it's just a an old 
standard padlock and it looks like there would be a key that fits it, but you have no idea where said key is. Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, I'll, 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 just, I'll just address the others then and say, looks like the only way we're getting in here is with a key. Hmm. Can I can I try and hit the padlock with my axe? Yeah, roll to hit. Okay. Uh, 17. You swing down with your axe, hitting the padlock, and it just chintzes off it. No damage has been done to it. Can I try and pick the lock? Please. Yep, make a dexterity check for me. Dex check. Nice. He's going to be doing some like creepy transforming with his fingers or something. <laughs> <laughs> or like Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seven. <laughs> Fucking hell, you've had so many sevens. <laughs> uh, you I don't think I've got above ten. There's that necrotic influence. He's really. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm disadvantaged aspects. anyway from, from my exhaustion. Yeah, seven. Who, who yeah. Was, I'm sure somebody else was still exhausted. Who was it that was exhausted? Everyone but... But, uh, but me, wasn't it? V, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, any, to remember so that. Any, any ability checks from now on, Elias, or in Gamma, you are disadvantaged until you have a lot of rest. Noted. Yeah, I've completely forgot, but... Honestly, you, uh, you, fail, you fail to pick the lock. The, the lock. I think we need to go downstairs and see if we yeah, can get into the basement. Key. I'll um, I'll just kind of like nudge everyone and then just point downstairs to make our way down and then I'll make my way down the stairs again. On DM on the third floor, um, did I when Elias found the secret passage up to the attic? Had I had a chance to check twelve C yet, or is that just sort of a? That was just a balcony leading just... to the outside. But again, you. If you stepped onto it, you would have just seen the mist. You can't see any of the town of Barovia. It's Okey that thick. Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, so if, if we can, <clears throat> if we can just sort of one by one, if we can just sweep the remaining, the remaining rooms on this floor. So if maybe if one of us takes sort of one at a time. So I'll take, um, I'll take thirteen, and then yeah, just I'll, have I'll a have a look the... around. I'll go to the um uh I'll go to the one uh the most southern one. I think we should stick it like two every two and a two. We don't think we should really split them. Yeah, I think splitting up's a bad. I'll, okay, I'll, well, I'll go carry on. I was gonna say I said I'd look after gamma, so I'll take gamma with me and go to thirteen. Yeah. So and I'll uh, go with Elias. Elias and Orin will go to the to the uh, room. I'll do uh, Gamma and Han first, so Elias and Orin, if you can mute Dan Devon, yep. please. Will do. Yeah, yeah, one sec. So, splitting up um, as you both go off to explore your own uh, areas of the house, you open the door to the room, and inside you see what appears to be a bathroom. It's very dark, there is no light from the outside in, and the torches on the wall are out. You notice that there is a wooden tub with clawed feet, and a small iron stove with a kettle resting atop it. A barrel under a spigot in the east wall, and a cistern on the roof used to collect rainwater, which was borne down a pipe to the spigot. However, it has long been gone since the plumbing has worked. Would you like to go back into the main hall, or...? I would investigate uh, this room again. Can Gamma knock on all the walls again and try and discern if there's any false walls or anything? Yeah, I'm make an investigation check. I am disadvantaged on this, unfortunately. I'm also going to I, encourage I, I, you to do it as well. I, I, I was going to say, yeah, I can I can do any of the same, uh, same roles. So, uh, 11 for me. Investigation, was it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got like plus zero on literally everything I have. No, <laughs> uh... nineteen. Uh, with careful consideration of trying to find um, secret passageways, something that may be that you're used to with your past history, uh, you knock and push 
in all the right places, but it is just a normal four walls. There is nothing of note or extra uh, speciality inside. I think this room's a dead end, Gamma. Let's check the rest. Hmm. Okay. Noted. Um, so you're going to go back out into the main hall, and at this point, I'm going to say that both Elias and Orin have gone into um, the southern room. So you guys, if you could mute. Uh, hello, hello. Just waiting on Brad. Where is he? <laughs> He's just gone for a piss. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. You know, we all have to have a. Uh, this is the this is the beauty of playing live. I know. <laughs> I'm just going. I'm going to pretend. It. <laughs> I'm going to pretend. Sorry, it. our friend's just gone for a piss. You've walked. You've walked into the room, and you can just see Orin just. Jogging <laughs> up. Taking a leak. <laughs> no, he's, he's jogging on the spot, trying to hold it in. Like you know, he really needs to go. And... Hello. He looks uncomfortable. Here he is. You're right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> when nature calls, eh? That's fine. When nature um, calls. You, you walk in to the, um, the room, seeing an elegantly appointed bedroom with an adjoining nursery. Double doors set with panes of stained glass pull open to reveal a balcony overlooking the front of the house. Inside, there is a small... Uh, Small, some small end tables, an empty wardrobe, and a large bed. Mounted on the wall next to the wardrobe is a full-length mirror with an ornate wooden frame carved to look like ivy and berries. Um, I am going to remove the uh, mirror from the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, walk over to it and make a perception check, please. Okie dokie. Five. It just looks like a normal mirror to you. Can I make an arcana check on it, see if it's got any magical properties? Yep, make an arcana, uh, arcana check. Are we on the third floor? We did. Yeah. Uh, disadvantage, so I presume that's going to fail. Uh, I've yeah. eight on both of them. <laughs> you, you can't notice any magic coming out of it. If you say there's like some locked tables or some or just like um There's some end tables but they're not locked. Um to your west if you were standing facing the land up towards the, the land where the stairs are, there's two doors, one that's a balcony and one with the door opening to reveal a baby's crib uh, crib. Oh god. Okay. Um can we go into the baby's crypt? <laughs> Go into it, like climbing. Yeah, that's so fucking dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no. Walk <laughs> into the baby's room. Let's, let's go for that one instead. Yeah, yeah that yeah. sounded so fucking off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you walk in um, and you notice in the middle of the room is the crib, uh, and inside there is a small um, blanket wrapped around. What you would appear, uh, what would appear to be a figure. Um, oh god. I, oh, um, okay. Shall I just go? Shall I just try and pick it up? Yeah, yeah. Oh god, <laughs> this is fucking. Good. This could be so scary. Okay. Um, I'm gonna sort of cautiously go to the figure that's wrapped in the blanket and uh, pick it up. Yep. You slowly make your way over. Uh, a bit cautious after what's just previously happened in the room upstairs. Obviously. Uh, you pick up the bundle and immediately it just unfolds and it is just a blanket that was wrapped up to make itself look like there was a baby inside. Got pranked. Look at Elias and I thank fuck for that. Yeah, I know, I kind of didn't want that to <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Can I... I'm going to... Um, I'm being a bit cautious. Uh, you know, like those end, like those kind of end drawers. You said that were closed, if but not locked. Yeah. Can I um, can I cast my mage hand to open one? Yeah. You summon um, for this mage hand, and normally where it's a light blue glowing uh, resemblance of 
your own personal hand. Uh, instead, a skeletal bone hand appears. It still does your bidding, but its uh, appearance has just changed. The same as how you're familiar, the owl, uh, mm. is half dead and skeletal. And it opens the uh, end drawers and nothing comes out. Oh, okay. Um, can I can I go over and take a look, see if there's anything in there? Yep. You walk over, slowly, uh, stepping the, the floorboards, creak ever so slightly, and you get over to look inside and peer through, and again, it is just empty. Hmm. There's nothing in this room, then. Do you want to check see if there's anything on the, uh, towards the balcony? This room here. Um, yeah, can I, um, can I, can, uh, if we go out on the balcony, are we going to get attacked with the gas? No, no, because... Not the you, gas, the fucking fog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the mist is surrounding the house, so the balcony is part of it, so you, it's, it's not going to assault you. Okay, can I go out onto the balcony? Yep. Um, and can I make a perception check to see if there is any way to get onto the roof? Yeah, make a perception check. Disadvantage, yeah. uh, obviously. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm disadvantaged, don't I? Oh, natural <laughs> one. <laughs> okay, uh, I got some shocking roll. You, so you look cool. out and you, you've got a bit of like, dust in your eyes and you, you actually, like, you're just busy like, cleaning it away. Like, oh, God. Just can't be fucked. You can't see anything. Is, it, is, is there nothing on the balcony? No, nothing ever noticed. Mm. Okay. I mean, okay, we've pretty yeah, much I think, we've, we've yeah, proved the others. I think we should do, go out and join the others then. But yep, you walk back into the main hall to be reunited with uh, V and Gamma. I have returned. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> Boys, there's fucking nothing in there, mate. So, sorry, where, where are we now? Where then? there was a baby. Well, we were thought was a baby, but, uh, nah, it was just some fucking tail. Where, where are we? Like, am I back in. How very observant of you. Thanks, mate. I pride myself on observancy. <laughs> where are you standing right now? Are we in the hall? Or where, where are we just watching yeah. them come out of that room? You're all in the main hallway, um, just standing by the staircase. So this floor's fully clear then. No sign of a key anywhere. All right, let's go downstairs. I would like to bagsy that I'm not going downstairs first. And all the last. Bagsy. <laughs> What's a bagsy? Ah, that is a turn of phrase utilized to insinuate. Uh, Han will Han will just like cut him off and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, come on guys, let's get a move on. <laughs> um, and anyway, Han will just go down first and like almost kind of like pull Gamma down with him, like just gently, mm -hmm. just okay. like a gentle tug to be like, come on, you freaking silly sod. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll follow um, in between the midst of everybody. Downstairs. You're now on the second floor. Uh, let's grab the... Yeah, back for that. Um... Uh, I was just saying, can I go into the uh, southern room of the uh, second floor, please? I'll follow, I'll follow. The large one at the, the base of it. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow in too. Uh, <clears throat> walk after you come down the stairs, you walk back and you see uh, that gossamer drapes cover the windows of this elegantly appointed hall. It has a brass plated chandelier hanging from the ceiling, motionless. The dust is thick all over it. Upholsters' chairs line the walls and stained glass wall hangings depict beautiful men, women, and children singing and playing instruments. Harpish cord with a bench rests in the northwest corner. Near the fireplace is a large standing harp. Alabaster figurines of well-dressed dancers adorn the mantelpiece. I'm going to suggest uh, someone else make a perception check. An arcana check, sorry. I can take a look with my magical expertise. However, I feel that my small friend Garrick would do a better job. Fucking <laughs> okay, my roll's been shit as well. Wait, is this an arcana check, rather, or a... <laughs> an arcana? Yeah, you, there's no magical essence coming out of this arc. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna can I walk over to it and can I play a couple of notes, please? Yep, make a performance check. As as he's just walking over, Han will be just like careful, Gamma. It is okay. I can recall strings of sequences. I think I can play something beautiful here. I'm not worried about what it sounds like, more so what else is going to hear it. Hmm. Do you propose that I don't play this instrument? That might be for the best. Ah. Very good. I will save it for another day. Perhaps a tavern where we can drink together might suffice. Let's just focus on getting out of here alive first, but I will hold you to that. <laughs> Very well. I will um, look out the windows, go to the windows, and see if I can see anything out of the windows. Make a perception check. Okay, well, I'm still disadvantaged because I'm exhausted. <coughs> Oops. Uh, seven. <laughs> it's dark and misty. That is all you can see. Bloody Nora. <laughs> in summary, fog weird. rolling in. God, I don't think I've rolled above a 10 yet properly. No, no. Um, so... Elias is going to go out of the room and into the north room. North facing room. I'll follow, I'll follow. Sure. I will go too. Time. Okay, you will walk out of the room with the uh, musical instruments of your ornate carvings and portraits, walking through the main hallway where the stairs are to the east and head north into the doorway. You open up the door, which really reveals a grand library. Red velvet drapes cover the windows of this room, an exquisite mahogany desk and a matching high back chair face the entrance and the fireplace, above which hangs a framed picture of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag. Situated in corners of the room are two overstuffed chairs. Floor to ceiling bookshelves line the south wall. A rolling wooden ladder allows one to more easily reach the high shelves. Is this where we just start pulling books off to see if there's a secret door? <laughs> like in Scooby Doo. That's it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start searching the books in, please. Uh, everyone make a perception check, please. Perception. I'm disadvantaged. Um, Fucking hell, man. These rolls have been too bad. Uh, four. That's alright. Hands here for you. 19. No, no, no. 19 and. Oh, wait. No. Oh, oh god damn <laughs> yeah, it, Gamma. God damn it, Gamma. <laughs> oh, I've got back to back 19s? What? <laughs> 19. Uh, you start just picking books up at random. Uh, you notice that there are hundreds of tomes covering a range of topics, including history, warfare, alchemy, and there are also a couple of shelves containing first edition collected works of poetry and fiction. Um, Gamma, you actually look at the desk and you can see several items on top of it. An oil lamp, a jar of ink, a quill pen, a tinderbox, and a letter kit containing a red wax candle, four blank sheets of parchment, and a wooden seal bearing a insignia of a windmill lie atop it. Hmm. Is the, there, there are some drawers on the desk as well. Is there any, and then I can discern any writing or notes or anything made in the parchment? No, the, the parchment's blank, but there's a wooden seal bearing the uh, insignia of a windmill on it, and there are some drawers on the desk as well. Have I seen... Um, this just to backtrack before I go investigating these drawers. Have I seen this 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 windmill a symbol throughout the rest of the house at all? Uh, yeah. So it's, you see a windmill, and you notice that there are quite a few portraits of windmills um, dotted around the house and depicted into the uh, decor. So you have the feeling that this insignia may, in fact, be a it's like a family um, crest or something, isn't it? Yeah. Family crest of the Durst family. Okay. Uh, did you say there's drawers available for me to look through as well? Yep. Meanwhile, whilst you're rooting through that drawer, um, <coughs> uh, Orin, you actually picked up a book which looks odd compared to the rest of them. It it looks heavier 
uh, but it has a blank spine, whereas the others have got writings, the titles of the book and the author. And you pull it out, and immediately behind you, a spring opens, and some hinges lift up, revealing a secret. Trap door, baby. Woo! Is that literally going to be a lie? There's like reaction in the room. <laughs> yes, do you want me to do an Australian accent? Please. Fucking trap door, mate! Yeah! <laughs> Cool. I thought we were watching the big Les show at all times. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you shoot in my letterbox? <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what part of the room has this passageway opened in, sorry? Uh, the secret room has appeared. Yeah, to the north. north Okie dokie. Uh, uh, Elias was the most excited, so I vote that he uh, has a look first. Yeah, man, Elias is already what he's, he heard the yeah. click and he got too excited. And he's uh, gonna. Elias, right. you, you go into it, squeezing through. Because um, I'm so hench. The hat. The minute that you get through, the hinges behind you snap and the door comes down, leaving you out of, uh, out of the room where the others are. And you can deafen yourself, please. Elias! Elias! <laughs> and I'll just be like. Knocking on the, uh, knocking on the wall. Uh, uh, Gamma, whilst you were searching through the drawers, you pulled it open and you find what appears to be an ornate iron key. Okay. I will alert everybody. Ah, I appear to have found a key. Can you describe the key, please? Heavy, uh, iron work with a huge round, um, <laughs> like, end of it, and it's got, like, a, a very clunky and chunky front part. Which, ascertaining from when you tried to pick the lock of the room upstairs, okay. it looks like it's perfect. Though. I'm going to put that into my jacket pocket and obviously alert everybody that I found a key and come round to the other side where I hear the uh, shouting and screaming at the, well, not screaming, shouting at the door and banging. Okay, you walk over to the rest of the group, hmm. see them shocked to see that Elias has been uh, trapped. But you know that to open it again, it is just a case of pulling the same book that you just did. Can anybody? Does anybody know which book he pulled? Well, I, I pulled the book, didn't I? Yeah, Orin knows which one it is. But I, so I would yeah, just pull that book again and it'd be fine. Yeah, you just say you put yeah, it back in like... space and it just clicks. Garrick, fix it. I'll yes, just, um, I'll just pull that book again then. Get him okay, out. the uh, book pulls out and again you hear the same uh, clicking noise as the hatch leads up to see a pretty shaken Elias as he, he just got trapped in a, in a room on his own. Guys, what the fuck happened? Ah, I might need to let you know that I have found a key. I believe it fits the lock from upstairs. Uh, Is there anything Elias, in the room, Elias? Yeah, you have a look around and you see a heavy wooden chest with clawed iron feet standing against the southern wall. Its lid is half closed. Sticking out of the chest is a skeleton in leather armour. Please do oh. not grab the head. Oh, I don't <laughs> think I'm going to open that. <laughs> Clutched in the skeleton's left hand is what appears to be a letter. I will grab the letter. <laughs> <That's changed everything. laughs> he's he's going he's gonna to do it very slowly and respectfully, though. Not if you're not going to make a it away. Make a performance check. <laughs> Oh, oh god. No. I should have said that. He's as well, he's disadvantaged. I shouldn't have said that. Am I disadvantaged on every single check? Yeah, every ability check, isn't it? Every ability check, until you have longest. Fucking hell. And there's no way I'm sitting in this bloody place for like six to eight hours, just alone, even in a room together. I think that'd be madness. Uh, Twelve, so if it goes any lower. Come on, bigger. There we go. Twelve. You pull the parchment, try to be as ever so careful as you can, and you, you pull it, you manage to not tear the parchment, but you've actually gone with a bit too much force, and the brittle skeleton hand has fallen away, and it just clumps to the floor. Slowly back away. <laughs> I... Han, Han will back up and give him space to get out of the room. Yeah. I do not think we need to be scared about this. I think... Elias, you can investigate. <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> but what? Just quite you say scary. That? 
Just read the damn letter. I'll read the letter then. Whatever it says. You unscroll the letter, and written in flowing script, eloquently put, it reads, My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on a path to immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms riding in my earth. You say that you are cursed, your fortune spent. You abandoned love for madness, took solace in the bosom of another woman, and sired a stillborn son. Cursed by darkness, of that I have no doubt. Save you from your wretchedness, think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Trad Van Zabrovich. Damn. <sighs> well read, Elias. I didn't know that you could read. Would you like to? Ex <laughs> uh, would you like to ex explore the chest? I, I, I'm very scared, but also model uh, Gamma is very curious simultaneously. Yeah, go on then. Uh, however, Elias, you are big, <laughs> strong, and scary. Perhaps you should enter yourself into the chest. <laughs> or open it, shall I say. <laughs> Climb into that chest! <laughs> oh. oh god. Um, Insert yourself into in the chest. <laughs> 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 we streaming on Pornhub again. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I will um, nervously sort of... A little bit, clearly a bit shaken from what's happened in this horror house. Um, yeah. Yep. You lift the chest open, and it creaks uh, as you do so. The skeleton falls a little bit deeper in as it's no longer wedged between the two the lids. Um, you notice that sticking out of the, the leather armor are some darts, uh, and assume that this poor soul has unfortunately triggered a trap of some sort, which has led to his death. Inside the chest, there are three blank books with black leather covers, three spell, spell scrolls containing bless, protection from poison, and spiritual weapon, and a deed to the house, and a deed to a windmill, and a signed will. Can I open the will and read the will? Yep. You open it and see that uh, it bequeaths everything the house, the windmill, and all the other family property to Rosa Valda and Ford Gold first in the event of their parents' death, signed by both Gustav and Elizabeth. Ah, so at least we know that there, there were real children at some point, whether these are ghosts or, or what. Yeah. So we, we might be being deceived by some kind of magical power, <laughs> but at least like the, the, the everything could potentially have been real. Um, so is that uh, everything that's in the chest? Yeah, nothing else. Okay, I'll, I'll, um, I can, I'll pocket the will and the deeds. You, yeah. you may as well. Someone else can have the spells, the the potions and stuff. Because what's the spells? Bless, protection from poison, and spiritual weapon. Orin, do you want the spiritual weapon or bless or protection from poison? Um, I don't mind. Like, I, I don't know what your damage is like with spells. I don't know if you'd be better off with them. Uh, there's no I'm point in having the protection from poison because I'm already immune. Oh, I'll have the protection from poison. You can have a spiritual weapon if you want. Well, yeah, what does Bless do again? Uh, you roll. Uh, you bless everyone in the room, I think, and then they get to add like a d4 onto their. Uh, say like an attack roll or something like that, or any checks, like uh, saving throws, I think. Okay. Sure, I, if you're right. Your anyway. I'll take spiritual weapon because you probably do more damage than me anyway. How long does yeah, it take yeah, to so learn? Yeah, so you take spiritual weapon. How long does right, it take boys, to learn? Boys, shall, uh, shall we go? I'm happy to go. So where are you? Where are you heading now? Um, I take it back up to the room. Go. We're going down the floor, aren't we? Are we going down the floor again? We've already done the first floor. You're on the second at the moment. Should we go back up and open the uh, open the door in the attic? Have we not gone up yes. to the attic yet? Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the, the locked room was. You found a key. Ah, yeah, yeah, let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Right then, let's go. Yeah, let's get that. Get the padlock off. Yeah, I'll go straight upstairs then and insert 
into the uh, insert the key into the um it's a lot of in, a lot of <laughs> self inserting <laughs> i've got my, uh, gamma hasn't got anything to insert he's, he's not, neither male nor female he's not got a tinkle no it it it's it, 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 it's an it it's an it <laughs> We, oh, oh sorry, did oh no, I just assumed it's Yeah, you just spot. assumed my gender, so thanks for that. Ah, uh, okay. yeah, Hopefully you'll forgive me. Let's get this door open. Let's you go. Walk up the stairs back onto the um, third floor. Using the secret passageway that you uncovered, you head up again into the attic area. Heading towards the northern doorway, uh, where the locked door is, gamma, you insert the key and with a satisfying kick. The padlock comes away, leaving the door to be open. Lovely stuff. Elias, would you mind entering first? Oh, why is it always got to be fucking me? Elias, <laughs> you turn into a werewolf. I am merely metal and magic. Fine. <laughs> I'll, um, Elias will slowly push the door open. You open the door with an audible creak. Inside, the room contains a bricked-up window flanked by two dusty wood-framed beds sized for children. Closer to the door is a toy chest with windmills painted on its sides and a dollhouse that's a perfect replica of the dreary edifice in which you stand. These furnishings are draped in cobwebs. Lying in the middle of the floor are two small skeletons wearing tattered but familiar clothing. Oh. Small of the two cradles are stuffed off that you also recognise. Can I make a perception check to see if this is Rosa and Thorn? You, you assume that it, it would be. They match the okay. body of the children, and the Thorn was carrying the doll, and it is the exact same doll that you noticed. Uh, it's the exact same doll. Um, Fuck. I, scary. What did we speak to outside, if here are the corpses of the two small children? Oh, I'd say it was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> You're very attentive, Elias. Right then, let's go explore this room. <laughs> just like everyone else is shitting themselves, and Elias is just like, yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to cover up with his bravado that he's not scared, but inside he is shitting his wee little panties. Elias, can I ask you a question, please? Go for it, mate. Does your beast side get any kind of cravings? Uh, like meat? Or what did you mean? Well, this is the third pile of bones that we have seen so far in this house, and not once have I seen an ounce of dribble come to the corner of your mouth. I was aware well, that dogs like bones. Are you are you calling me a dog? Ah, no, sorry, not a. Did dog you just though. assume my species? <laughs> well, Han, Han will just like step in between the pair of them and be like, "Calm down, you lot. We need to keep our heads clear if we want to make out make it out of this." <laughs> yes, Elias. Please, no more funny business. Gamma, just try and keep a lid on it a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I will, um, <laughs> um, can I, oh, it's the same doll, isn't it? If I pick this doll up, it's going to attack me. Um, uh, I'll, 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 go on. I'll, yeah, I'll just, um, was it, was it just me and Brad that saw the doll? Everyone who's walked into the room can see it. But like beforehand, was it just me or? Oh no, it's not that doll, you know, it's on the windsill like this it's the doll the kids were carrying yes yeah, oh, 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 um, you said there was a doll house in there Rick? there is yes you can have a look in the doll house is it a <laughs> is it a re <laughs> that is my house is there a replica of the uh, is it like a perfect replica of the house exactly yeah the same can yes. i can i look at the thing to see if there's a way into the basement uh yep so you walk over and make a perception check for me please oh 20. Oh, uh, <laughs> fucking natural twenty with disadvantage, but yeah, um, unnatural twenty then. <laughs> that my uh, so yeah. Wow. Walk over um to the dollhouse, which is actually only a little bit smaller than yourself. 
Um, <laughs> you don't, you don't actually yeah, have to yeah. kind of like bend over or get on your knees to inspect it. So, uh, you just kind of crane your neck. You brush away some of the cobwebs. And the second your hand touches the cobweb, you hear a girl's voice behind you go, Please don't mess with that. Holy oh. shit. Um, and in the room in front of the skeletal remains are Rose of Alba and Thornbolt. Are they no. like skeleton children? No, they are in the form of a goat. They're just, they're just in the, uh, So you're back then? Back? We, we haven't left this place. What do you mean back? Well, you weren't exactly forthcoming outside, were you? Been outside. We've, we've never left this room. Hence, you can see our skeletons. Wait. So we, it wasn't you outside in the street. No, probably an illusion that the house has played on you. It likes to do that. Does it? So, are you suggesting that the house played an illusion to force us inside? Why on earth would it want us to do that? Probably something to do with mother and father and the monster they keep in the basement. So, there really is a monster in the basement? Yes, they locked us in here for protection, but we died of hunger as they forgot about us. Uh, quality Jesus parents, Christ. then. <laughs> Elias, and I'll just like, I'll just like thump Elias on the shoulder. Uh, roll to hit. <laughs> uh, what do you want it to be? Like an unarmed strike? Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 um, oh, oh. Damn. It's alright, I've got a reaction. Yeah. Go on, go for a hit. 13? 13. That's a miss. Okay, you kind of like go to punch him on the shoulder and kind of like breeze past and slap his peck. <laughs> my, my solid peck. I'll ask the children how we can get down into the basement since they're done messing with their little house. Rose looks and points to the dollhouse and says, There's a secret door in the attic. Hey, one more thing. Do you mind explaining, please? What is in the basement? We've never seen the monster. Mother and father forbade us from going down there. But it has terrible howls. I'm not sure what you'll find. Uh, How long have you been up here? <clears throat> um, time's kind of hard to understand when you've been dead. Do you know anything about the fog that lingers outside? No, I'm afraid not. As I say, we've been locked in here for the most of our lives. Okay, I will inspect the... Um, I think it should given us permission to look in the dollhouse. Yeah, um, at the uh, check that Garrett, uh, Orin actually did, he noticed the secret compartment, but the ghosts of Rose and Thor uh, were summoned the immediate second that he touched okay. the dollhouse, so Garrett knows the location. Garrick knows. Is there anything else that we should know about this house, Rosenthorn? Not that I can tell you, unfortunately. As I say, we lived a very secluded life, and mother and father weren't very forthcoming. Have you ever visited at Windmill? No, that's our family legacy, I suppose. It's how father made his money. Was he a, <laughs> a windmiller? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what a windmiller is, but I think he owns some form of farmland. Ah, it's to, it's to, it'd, be, it'd be to make bread, wouldn't it? That's um, what I realised. Yeah. Uh, a windmiller. Not, not, I, mean, not I think a miller. A miller is the word about it. A miller. A miller, not a windmiller. <laughs> a windmiller just sounds like a sexual it, deviant. Just, <laughs> was just throwing his arms around. Rose and thorn. Your father was a windmiller. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Is there any way that we can release your souls from this place? Or are you happy? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're stuck here then. Please don't leave us. We won't leave. We will first... We have, we have to find a way to help them. How about if we banish this monster? Or you kill it, V. We might be able to. 
If that's what's holding the curse on this place, then it's certainly worth a shot. Orin, do you know how we can get into the basement? Uh, I'll just point towards the dollhouse, show him what I saw, so and then the, what the uh, what the kid confirmed. Yeah, so the room that the um, remains of the woman in the chest were in, in the northern part of it, northwest, there is a uh, door panel that can be lifted up, which reveals a stone spiral staircase that leads down. I knew it was a fucking staircase. <laughs> right then, let's go. How do we get there? Yeah, uh, you can you lead the way, Aaron? Yeah, you walk south out of this room, back into the main hall, um, and then west, and then into the southern room again, which would be where all the dusty sheets were. And the which floor do we enter it from? You're on the on the attic, the same floor you are. Okay, okay. So who's leaving the room first? Uh, Orin, because he knows the way. Yep. Okay. I'll um... be behind. Please make a constitution saving throw, Orin. Shit. Um, <laughs> I'll just quickly load my finger. Am I disadvantaged with saving throws or just um, just ability, ability check? check. Yeah. Oh, okay. On saving throws based off your um Natural Twenty. Ooh. Uh good stuff. Rose of Alda tried tries to possess you, um, as she fears abandonment like her father and mother have done to her. However, your will is too strong, so she returns to the middle of the room. You are now outside. I'll I'll just, kids, man. I'll just turn to her um and just like hold my scimitar out to her and be like, what do you think you're playing at? <laughs> I don't want to be left alone. You, you, you've seen what it's done already. I hate being alone, and my brother isn't much company. He just cries and sniffles all the time. You hear Thor in front of No, I don't. <laughs> Look, if you want us to break this curse and help you move on, then you have to let us get on with the job. No possessions, no funny business, no tricks. Understood? Once we've gone to the basement, dealt with what's ever down there, we will come back, I promise. I don't believe in promises. Mother and father said they'd promise they'd be back for us, and look what happened. If you won't let us come with you, then we'll just have to kill you. We're off for combat. Oh, oh brilliant. bloody Nora, mate. You didn't even give me a chance to respond. Right then, let's kill some kids. Oh, but... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just the I think fact I... she didn't... E I'm, I, I, she didn't even let me respond. I'd be like, yeah, float along, but don't freaking like, insert yourselves into our bodies, you get me? <laughs> they they, they <laughs> physically cannot leave the room unless they're possession. I think... Uh, uh, oh, they can't... Oh... You need to find new, new, new gods to, to curse at, Van, because... Uh, I think, uh, or V, sorry, because I don't think Jesus Christ is in the, uh, the D&D Yeah, I don't think <laughs> virus. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we on for initiatives this time, then? 19 for Gamma. Uh, oh, fuck, 17. Hold on. hold on. Everyone hold the horses. 13. There's been a lot of inserting in this game. I think this should be the title Far of the podcast. Insert, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Episode 1, Insertion. The, the insert. <laughs> yes! Yes. Uh, 12 for me. Okay, uh, first up, it is Gamma's go. Okay, uh, so there's two of them. Two ghosts. Okay, I am just going to target one and cast a firebolt at one. Uh, rose at Rose. Yep, roll to hit. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not disadvantaged, am I, or am I? No. Okay, uh, 22. <laughs> yeah, hits. Uh, ten. Ooh, baby, max damage. Okay. No, no. You fire the what was it? A firebolt. Firebolt. Yes. Um, again, it has the same effect that you noticed that the spectre had, where it went through and singes a little bit of the spirit, um, but then it kind of coalesces back to a full form. Okay. Uh, so you'll go over. 
Yes, thank you. Rap. Um, did did that damage it then or not? Yeah, it's damaged it. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll fire off a firebolt as well. Yep, on um, which one? Rose or Thorn? Oh, I'll just stick with Rose. Yep, roll to hit. She's been hit. This is actually horrific what we're doing. <laughs> Nothing wrong with kidding. Oh, that's a 20. Roll <laughs> damage. He's rolled 2d20 then, fucking hell. Uh, 12 damage. Okay, you fire off the firebolt, hitting the same uh, location that Gamma did, and again it goes through uh, and leaves again a bit of damage, but then it, it forms back to a solid. Uh, again, she stares at you, grimacing. Uh, Elias, you'll go. Um, I think I'm going to refrain from turning to a wolf because I've only got one rage left and we've got a monster to kill as well. Um, so I'm just going to attack with my great axe. Roll to hit. Alright. 13. Hits. Oh. Nice. Suppose they are only children. <laughs> huh. uh, da -da. Damage. Eight points of damage. You swipe through and the axe goes clean through, again, leaving a bit of pain on Roosevelt's face, but not as much as you would have thought. That you'll go over? Yes. Thoughts? Um, I, will, I will try one final time to appeal to Rosa, um, and I'll be like, Look, kid, you can't overpower us. You can't defeat us. I know what your parents did to you, and I can only... I can only apologize for that. I'm sorry that they trapped you in here. I'm sorry that you had to die this way. But we are not them. You have to take our word that we will dispatch this monster, and if you want to truly be free of this place, then you have to allow us to lift this curse. You will not take us by force. And if we kill you, there's no telling where you will go. You may never see your mother and father again. And I'm sure that's not what you want. So please, think of them. Think of your brother. Let us help you. Let us lift this curse. And then we will be back for you to help you move on. Damn. That was a good I speech. would be quite happy to never see mother or father again, as they were the ones that put me in this position. And how am I to believe you when your three companions have already attacked me? You're just evil, mean men, just like father was. Rosa, you attacked first. And all I'm trying to do is help you. I have oh, not lashed never out. Attacked first. All I did was never want to be left alone again. It's not exactly, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of the word. It's Language, uh, come it's to not, me. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not exactly courteous to try and take someone's body by force, Rosa. I wouldn't have took it by force. I'd have just been a passenger in their mind. That is not exactly how we do things. You're no fun. That your turn over talks. Uh, just she's, to... she's not voicing to any reason from what she's not... said. No, she's just she's kind of stood there with her arms crossed, looking very moody. Oh dear. Um. Obviously, I've already warned her about going to some dark abyss that she doesn't know what awaits her can i just like i guess not attack but can i just like obviously she would have heard my words about the <laughs> the uh, dark abyss um <laughs> I, i'll just hold out one of my scimitars like up to thorns um thorn is it thorn is the yeah. kid yeah um i'll just like um i'll hold <laughs> out to his throat and i'll just look um rosa dead in the eyes of like Final warning. 
takes no heed of this warning and she lashes out at you. Silly with bitch. Withering touch. And rolls a. 21. Jesus Christ. Hit. So you take 4d6 plus 3 necrotic damage. 2, 5, 8, 14, uh. 17 points of necrotic damage. Fucking hell. Okay. okay. That's her turn over, and now Thorn turns around and goes to attack. Who does he attack? Uh, that is you, Elias, and Thorn rolls a 9. That's a miss. That I use only about 4, so we'll let him a little punk. Uh, back round to Gamma's go. How old is she? Hit frickin' rolling 21 on me, the bitch. <laughs> Niceties are over now. Been watching too much Fortnite, she knows what to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, another fireball to Rosa again, please. Roll to hit. 17. It's Roll damage. Uh, one. One point of damage. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Okay, yep. That's my turn ever. Uh, Orin. Uh, same same as Ard for for a ball. Yep, go for a hit. Uh, Eleven. Ooh, just. Bloody hell. Shit. Oh, big um, damage. Big damage. Uh, eight. Okay, you, you fire off another fireball at Rosa, uh, Rosa Bell, and she takes a bit of damage from it. Uh, Nice. Uh, yeah, I will uh, attack again with my great axe. Roll to hit. Oh, are you not in your werewolf form at the moment? No, I've only got one uh, rage left. So these ones, they're disturbingly stronger than the uh, the maid. Twelve. Uh, hits, yep. Hits, yep, and doing damage. Seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, that then. Uh, is that your turn over? That is my turn over. Yep, yeah, okay. It's your go, Tools. Uh, uh, two attacks on Rosa with me, Simi Tarius. Roll to hit. Yep, that's on 19! Nice. Uh, Natural 20. Natural 20. Oh. Bang, bang. Let's Woo. get it. Pure anger of being assaulted by a child has bubbled up into Han's eyes and he lashes out with two quick and efficient swipes. Roll damage. 17. Oh, good. Um, that would be that. Okay. But you'll go over. Yes. Do some quick maths here. Quick maths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to look more into like what hand can do because I've got, okay. I've got, I've got like maneuvers where if people like miss attacks on me, I can use like a limited superiority die to react. But that's pretty sick. It's too late for you that. You find a calm maths, was not it? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. Uh, right, it's now Rosalinda's go, and she's going to target uh, UV and rolls a nineteen. Oh, Is that on? Oh. On me, me here, and I'm going to be on the deck. Four d six plus three necrotic damage. Two, Fucking hell. Seven, twelve, fourteen, seventeen points of damage. Yep, I'm on the deck. And it drops as this child's withering touch hits him on the arm, and you hear Argh! as he falls unconscious to the floor. It is unconscious. Now... Well, he's down in it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's now Thornbolt's go, and he attacks you, Gamma. Okay. Roll the nineteen. I Gamma casts shield. <laughs> okay. Level one, and I gain 
I hold out my hands and a, a magical shield emanates uh, all around me, increasing my armor class by 5, so I now have an armor class of 20 for that hit. Yep, uh, so the hit bounces off you as he tries to wither away. Actually, from... no, it's sorry, it's not a reaction. Oh yeah, it is a reaction, I haven't been in it. It is a reaction, yeah. yeah, go yeah. Um, so that is Thorns go over, it's now back round to you. Okay, uh, I am going to... Am I near enough to touch V? Yep, you're, like, you're kind of right on top of okay. each other. I'll cast Cure Wounds uh, on V. I'll okay. re reach down, touch him, and some magical energy. Magical juices will flow into V. <laughs> what the fuck's going on tonight? Everyone, everyone's real <laughs> horny tonight. So he gains yeah. six hit points. So he gains six down has got us feeling some kind of way. You're back up on six HP. Is he not seven? Or does he, or does he just have the pure six? No. Pure six. Zero, wouldn't he? Technically so. Thank you, Gamma. Uh, is that your go over? Yes. Thank you. That's okay. all we can do. Orin? Uh, fireball at the uh, the ghost of Rosa. Rosa Valda, yep, roll to hit. Ghost of Christmas past. 22. That hits. Bang. Finish her. Four. Fire off a fireball. She looks um, as worse for wear as a ghost can kind of be, to be honest. <laughs> Nearly headless Nick. Yeah, pretty much. Nearly <laughs> <laughs> headless. Uh, that your go over, Elias. Uh, yep. Uh, I'll have a, another swing of the old great axe. Roll to hit. That hit. Sixteen. Well done. Roll damage. Roll damage. Mm -hmm. Seven. You decapitate Roosevelt oh, from her ghostly on the body. Deck. And all around the form of her just slowly fades away into nothingness, leaving Thorn standing a little bit shocked, but still looking quite menacing. Oh, Elias says go over, and it is now hands go. Mm, you attacks with. Imitarius. Child mine's gonna have a field day if they listen to this, you know. But yeah, that one hits. And a natural <laughs> one, you drop one of your scimitars onto the floor. <sighs> Gosh, so roll damn. Damage. Gosh darn it. Roll damage for God the damn it. Oh my god! Another one. Fucking Ooh, hell. Yeah. <laughs> Three. Yep, uh, that is your go over, and it is the unbelt go. Who's the attack? Uh, you, Gamma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, roll a 21. Uh, okay, hit. And that is 4d6 plus 3 necrotic damage. Oh Five. my god. We're going to get absolutely. 18. <laughs> 24. 27 points of necrotic damage. What? I'm on the oh. deck. Oh no. Ah. Uh, <laughs> what was that noise at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Can we not, not find the Windows XP shutting down noise for it to down goes down? Put that in, put that in post. <laughs> <laughs> yes, saving to her, please. I've got to do one immediately. Okay. Oh shit, okay. Oh, is this going to be a critical fail? fail. Oh, that's a fail. fail. Uh, it is now your go, uh, Orin. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cast a... I'll cast that in. I'll make sure I hit. I'll cast a second level guarded bolt. At okay. Little, little... What's his name? Toby. Little Timmy. Little Timmy. <laughs> little Timmy. Thorn <laughs> 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 bolt. Little... Little shit number two. Yeah, shit Little back. shit number two. Uh, 15 damage. Wait, did you hit or did it just hit straight away? A golden, golden bolt just hits anything. Oh, right, okay. Um, yep, so you do a significant amount of damage with that one. Oh my god. 
from that small guy. Right, we'll go over Joseph Elias. All right, then, mate. Uh, same shit. Great axe attack. Uh, 21. Oh, big it. Yeah. On the fucking deck. Uh, okay. Nine uh, points of damage. Nice, nice bit of damage there, Matt. Nice bit of fucking damage. And it's now Torx go. You only have one scimitar in your hand, so you can only do one attack unless you spend an action to pick up the two, and then you can do two your next turn. Um, oh, I was going to ask actually, since the second attack is normally a bonus action, could that bonus action just be picking up the thing instead? Yeah, I'll allow it. Oh, why are you being so nice today? Uh, I'm I'm, I wouldn't. I'm down from a child <laughs> goat. So yeah, like, no. <laughs> what, what, um, and then I also raised the question of instead, since that would be using a bonus action to bend down and pick up, could I do a stabilize or is that a bit too far? No, you can't do that. Don't push your luck, mate. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a try. Worth a try. It's just like, no, it's not in the rules. <laughs> stabilize, gamma, or attack and pick up your scimitar. Okie dokie. Um. <clears throat> What did you roll last time, Gamma, for your thing? A four. Okay. Okay. I'm trusting you here. I'm trusting the heart of the cards, the heart of Dice Maiden. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna attack once and then just pick up my uh, my other thing. Roll to hit. Yep. Okay. Nice. Roll uh, damage. Six plus two. Oh, man. <laughs> That's the natural one we've got. <laughs> well, the uh, right, let's see what we'll go over. And Thornbolt goes for an attack on you, Gavin. Uh, Orin. Orin, Gavin, Gavin. Gavin, <laughs> Gavin from Autoglass. Gavin. Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> from Autoglass. <laughs> it's, it's 19. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use shield as my reaction to bring my armor back to 20. Okay, and he has no luck on his attack. Uh, Gamma, second death saving throw. Oh, here we go. Do not oh, let dude. me down, Gamma. Do yeah, not yeah. let me down. 13 success! Yeah, that's just one pass, one fail, and it is now Orin's go. Uh, I'll cast a firebolt on, on uh, Azigos. Okay. No love for Gamma at all. No one gives a shit about uh, Gamma. I, I, don't have any, I don't have any healing stuff for him. Oh you can stabilise, can't you? How close am I to him? I I on top of it, it, yeah. It's alright, just go, go for damage. Now, cause he, can, he can do some damage or in can. Yeah, get, get deep soon. I mean, I can't stand because I'm on the deck. Mm, 10. <laughs> and this is the fireball. <laughs> oh. Flies. Through the, go uh, the ghost and actually sets the dollhouse on fire. Oh no, more awesome. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, Quit arson about. Hey! <laughs> Zing. Uh, it's now Elias's go. Uh, yeah, same same again. I'll do another Great Axe attack. We're on to hit. Yes! 20. I don't quite uh, uh, These little shits have got far too much yeah. HP. Yeah. Seven again. A nuke, not bad. Not great either. Damn it. Uh that would be Hammond's go. It is. I am responsible for gamma like I either attack twice or I get gamma. Um I think let's just yeah, carry on. I'm not I'm down so I shouldn't get interfered with this. Uh, um, yeah, it's your decision alone. I w oh. God damn it. Right. <sighs> two attacks on little shit number two. <laughs> yep, yes. roll to hit. You <laughs> miss. Oh, for goodness sake. Fucking hell. Okay, so it's now Thornbolt's go and he targets. Uh, you again are in rolls a 16 um 
That is a hit, I think. I mean, I don't know how shield works. How long does that last? It's a reaction, so it, yeah. Well, you'd, you'd oh, until the start of your next turn, so it would have been used then. Uh, I'll use shield again. I'm not taking this risk. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so again, it can't pierce your magical force that you're uh, emitting to protect yourself, and he lets out that uh, uh, kind of angry. It is now Gamma's go. Is he going to Holy get another pass? Shit. Another play. Oh, no. Remember, boys, if this is a natural one or a natural two, no, no, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't say shut that. Up. Why would you say that? Shut up, shut up, shut up. Three to oh. fail. It's a fail. Oh. Two fails, one pass. Uh, Orin, oh, in your go. Fucking hell. Um, what do, what does stabilising actually do? Puts you to one hit points. One hit points. I'll, I'll stabilise him then. <laughs> okay, you turn around and press on the wounds um, that Gamma has. Kind of like you just kind of plug the charging cable into him and like he's like back to life. Uh, and Gamma is now up on one HP, and that is your go over, which brings it down to a life. Uh, yep, yeah, again. Getting boring, but it's all I got. <clears throat> Another Great Axe yeah. attack, 17. Yeah. And. How much damage? <sighs> Five points of damage, for fuck's sake. Okay. And it is now. <clears throat> you attack boys. Yep, roll hit. Hit. Okay. Ah! Oh, no. Enemy. Oh. Roll damage. Yeah. Six. Okay. And it's Thorn Belts go. Who do you go for? You, Han. I bet it does. 21. Oh, piss off. Him. Him. What are these rolls? <laughs> piss off with these rolls. Hit, motherfucker. Hit. Four, seven, eight. Well, I'm down. Four, 14, 17 points of damage. Yep. Okay, Hannah's dropped to the deck again. On the deck, oh, like no. Davy Jones. And uh, it's Gamma's go. Okay. Um, I'm going to fire a firebolt. At... Is it Rose who's taking the most damage? Rose is dead. Rose is dead. dead. Oh, she's dead. Yeah. She's double, yeah, well, she's double dead. Turd left. Yeah, I'll, I'll fire a fireball at uh, five bolts. <laughs> Twenty. Hey, hey, that hits. Thank the fuck for that. Freaking Eight end. points of damage. Usher forth this fireball with anger uh, from yourself, and the fire just kind of just goes all over Thorn's body, and he starts to writhe in pain as though his spectral form is actually being burnt alive. Anguish is on his face and eventually just <laughs> evaporates, leaving you out of combat. Uh, Han, you are now back up on one HP. Uh, yeah, you're looking a little bit worse for wear, and you're stood in the child's room with the model of the dollhouse still on fire. What would you like to do? Um, can I get one of the sheets from the bed and put it out, put it over it to put it? Yep, yeah, run over and start patting away the fire, uh, making sure that. It doesn't spread to any of the wooden beams or floorboards of the house, and you successfully douse the dollhouse. Uh, it's we... blackened and charred, and the bits of the house kind of crumbled and fallen to pieces. So we're in the so we're in the attic. You're in the attic. You now know where the <clears> secret <throat> entrance is. Um, okay. You could, if you wanted to, take a long rest. Yes. I was gonna say because we've we've yeah, we've cleared, we we've, we've cleared what well, we've cleared floor two, three, and the attic fully. But yeah, we can't go into a uh, a Come basement fight the... like this. Where, <laughs> would, like this. Where would you like to um, set up yourselves for the long rest? In Do the we... attic, Ooh. or not? Just stay in this room. What with nah, not with kid corpses. No, thank you. Um, I yeah. I'm 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 saying. Ho, ho, hold on, let me look at the layout again. Uh, what, what about the the harp room? 
I was going to say, yeah, that feels like somewhere you'd kind of like a hole down in an apocalypse situation. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is that the, on the, the second floor? Yeah, second floor. The the music room. The music okay. room. Let's play a few. Oh, then Gamma I can, can still... play a few little ditties. I can alert you if anything's coming because I rest in a inactive, motionless state, but I can still hear <laughs> and see as normal. You don't stand by. I'm, I'm like a sentry, so I can like I can like, point my, I can point my eyes at like the entrance to the door to the room and just go go to sleep, but my eyes are still open. Oh yeah. Yes, uh, let's hungry. do it. Let's you're do that. The, you're just going to be the group's alarm clock in this campaign, aren't you? Just... <laughs> yeah, I only need six hours as well. No, okay. Yeah. Um, are you going to... What are you going to do about this room? Are you going to lock it up? Are you going to leave it open? We're locking it up again. And I'll take piano to barricade the door. <laughs> <laughs> the lock so you, uh, was wrong before. You walk out of the child's bedroom closing the um, door behind you and locking it with the padlock. You walk down the set of stairs onto the second floor and lead yourself through into the music room whereby you close the door and lay down your bed rolls ready to have a long rest. And that is where we will end tonight's session, boys. Bloody not right. Oh, it feels so good. Oh yeah, that feels so good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that long rest was so good. That was so good. Oh yeah. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you very much for listening. Good night. <laughs> very top gear, that was. Jeremy <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Clarkson in the air. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson with his suit and his jeans on. Christ. Like flares, they wear fucking flares, don't they? Yeah, I know, with that horrible, like, dress shoes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jeremy, the whole time, there's like a one point I was like, pissing the bloody bottle. <laughs> <laughs>